upon logging in, I couldn't see no balances. So it was just my name there. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? We closed your account for business decisions. And I was like, they were like in the letter that they would have sent me would have said why. And I was like, well, I'm in Florida right now and I need access to my money. Like, this is not okay. Like I'm completely stranded in a whole nother city right now. This is not okay. And I was panicking about it. And they were like, well, we mailed you a check. What? <laughs> Hello, hello. We are back again and we have my favorite guest so far. I already know she's going to be my favorite. I'm super excited for this episode. We have my friend, Spiritual Medusa. Hi. (laughs) She actually has another guest with her. It's her little hairless cat, Miso. If you're watching this, he is so cute sitting next to her. (laughs) You would never guess he's so soft too. (laughs) So cute. I've never met a hairless cat before. And you go, guys know I'm a cat person. So super cute. Um, so Medusa here, she is an OnlyFans creator and she's a spiritual healer, guider, I guess you would say. Can and you ex- explain your name to all of us? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, I'm a spiritual healer, energetic healer, astrology, tarot, psychic uh, reader, medium, you know, those type of th- uh, realms. I love energy. And how, how did you get into that? Um, the true story, What I mean, I grew up spiritual because my mother, she's in Santo, um, but I wasn't like tapped. It was just like I knew certain things intuitionally, dreams, different things like that. But more so when my ex-husband started like seeking out ser- uh, psychics for things that we were going on in our marriage I was like no 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 you're not gonna ask someone else for these answers ask me because it was creepy yeah she was on really? she was on point <laughs> oh my god did you have to like learn or anything like that or did it come naturally like how do you uh, you definitely have to learn um a lot of people say they were gifted their first tarot cards I more so literally walked into a store and was like oh tarot book oh mm-hmm. tarot cards time to start learning yeah. <laughs> it was kind of like <laughs> open the door from there you just learn per card you read about it you keep pulling the cards and each card has a different definition based on the layout that you're pulling them so you just kind of keep relearning the imagery and the definitions and what it means to you wow can you read your own cards yeah yeah I pull my own cards twice a month on the moons, new and full, because there's lessons, you know? It's not as cool as having someone else pull it for you, but you, it's like you can really sit with yourself and be like, all right, I'm this, their spirits are smacking me right now with this truth. I'm going to take it, you know? Yeah. So sometimes when someone else is reading your cards, you can completely shut down and be like, no, nah, I'm not receiving this information. So. Wow. At the end of this episode, we're actually going to get a reading. Yes. So I'm like super excited. She read me basically last night. So we're going to more focus on Mer. Yes, I'm so excited. <laughs> She's a little scared. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to expose me. Yeah. <laughs> Might. <laughs> I'm ready for it. Um, so we have lots of questions. I feel like you're a very interesting person. <laughs> um, you're creative with your OnlyFans life, you're creative in your art life with your yoga and your yeah. spiritual um, <laughs> side. Um, we're going to get right into it. Um, so you have a really tough upbringing, which yeah. obviously brought you to who you are today. Yeah. Um, so I know that you were homeless at one point, living in a car. How did you? How did that happen and how did you get out of that? Um, I was actually homeless multiple times. The very first time I was 18, um, my oldest son was like around, I think was like around like six months to eight months at this time. Um, And me and his father, we were just like, he wasn't working at the time. You know, he's in the military now, but at the time he didn't have a job, refused to kind of work. He was couch bumming it on his mom's couch. And um, when I came back to Texas after giving birth to my son, I was living, you know, couch bumming it on other people's couches and home hopping. And then I got my own place at that time, too. I got hired at AT AT&T and they weren't honest about like my job duties. So I ended up being floated around the floater to all these stores, like two hours away, four hours away. It was intense. So I almost couldn't afford the gas anymore. I was driving a Volvo. And then eventually I was just like... (laughs) I can't afford it. So I'm going to live out of my car. And me and my oldest son's father, we were just arguing so much. Some of his claims would be like, I'm going to watch you fall, you know, because we'd be arguing so much. He'd be like, I'm not going to help you. I'm going to watch you fall. You're going to beg for my help. You're going to want, you know, all these things. And me being stubborn, I was like, well, watch me not ask you. (laughs) (laughs) So I like slept out of my car. And um, there was many moments where I'd be like at work and 
it just come out to customers because I'm just an open book. Like as I'm ringing up their tra sales transactions, I'm now talking about my shit. And, <laughs> you know, they would either offer me help um, to help me with my kid or home for like the night or different things like that. So I did that for a couple of months. And then I ended up meeting someone who was like, we're not having this situation. Like, I'll just pay for your gas to get, you know, from home to work. Because I lived an hour and a half away from where I was working. Jesus. So that's partially why. And I was like, I can't afford this, you know. So he paid for my gas for me to get back and forth for a little bit. And then um, I was able to start getting on my feet just a little bit. And then also the second time was the first separation and second separation of my marriage. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> so then is that how you got into OnlyFans or is OnlyFans way after? OnlyFans was um, actually more so because I was tired of being deleted on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> All of my photos, like um, a lot of people, they don't understand. Like I'm so passionate about modeling because each time I argued in my marriage or wasn't very happy, I'd literally just jump in my car and like, I'm going to go for a drive. I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to go do this. And I was driving up and down Austin, Texas alleyways and just parking my car and like getting out and taking photos because yeah. that got me out of the element of where I was and I can just be free for a moment and be excited about that so I would post those and that's kind of like how I started like modeling more and then those started getting flagged <laughs> so I was like I'm gonna just post this on OnlyFans and I was working for an insurance um, job at the time but um, it just kind of escalated like I want to say three months into it and I knew I was about to quit this job because they were just doing the most and I was like I, I got too much insight for you guys and you're not taking it and making my job easier so I'm gonna leave I'm gonna give you guys the option but I'm gonna make it for you right <laughs> so yeah. I walked out and I was like I'm gonna continue his OnlyFans life <laughs> wow how fast did you get into that like how fast did your OnlyFans blow up I want to say I was doing it model base wise for three months mm -hmm. and then Around three, four months, Photo Mills kind of like he introduced himself in my life because he was like, he helped me with my Instagrams way back then. He was like, we're going to help you get some money because this is ridiculous. And then he started showing me the ways of like what photos to take, what videos, because I was baby. Like, what do you mean you want me to do this? <laughs> like, it was super uncomfortable. And then I want to say in month four or five, then I started seeing like huge increases. Like I was already making what my job made. Wow. So when I quit, I was like, oh, I'm about to blow this mm -hmm. up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, yep. And now they're probably looking at you now like, damn, she really did the thing. <laughs> Mills was like a secret little like ingredient back in the day. Dude. <laughs> I swear to God. Dude, he was such a secret ingredient. Like he would literally send me for references like I didn't even know what he was telling me he was like here here's a reference do this and I'd be like and he's like don't worry about it this is how you need to edit it put a big blur on it like yeah. he was like we're not gonna you know blow you out like whatever you're comfortable with will work in that realm and yep. you know he was patient with me and he kept showing me the the ways my ex-husband wasn't happy with that yeah, <laughs> yeah he was definitely a he was a gold mine well, um a lot of people that's the reason why I got into OnlyFans is because I just kept getting deleted on <laughs> Instagram so I always say I blame Instagram for this whole uprising of the OnlyFans like honestly that's why you, everyone turned You've been deleted a bunch of times. 45 times. Oh three this year. Oh my God. Yeah. And I honestly think a lot of it was just only our Instagram confused with their own terms and conditions because it just made no sense. A lot of it, um, I understood, you know, it was like implied nude and all these things, but it just didn't make no sense. A mm -hmm. lot of things that were getting deleted. I was going to, um, at one point claim dead. Another time I was like mo six accounts for impersonations. Like I keep mental tracks with all this claimed stuff. Claimed dead? Yeah, claimed dead. A lot of people do that to get you deleted they say that you're dead yeah what one of my largest accounts i should have had a million followers organically by now yeah. but one of my largest accounts like two summers ago it was like 300 and something k was literally for a month straight i'd be like deleted reported came back reported dead yeah. couldn't have access like me and a hacker were like going back and forth with our brains like mm -hmm. what do we do like we're he's like i'm bringing you back it's just instagram is weird right now right. and so it eventually got permanent banned um this now name instagram that i have spiritual medusa a lot of people don't even catch it because i didn't say nothing because i didn't want to jinx myself but this same username was the same username i had december this time last year really 
really? Yeah, and my account was deleted. No flags, no warnings. That it was a clean account, spiritual, all that stuff. Yeah. And I had a hundred and thirty something thousand, and just woke up one day and it was gone. And then eight months later, I'm allowed to use the username again, as if I never created that account. I was like, what the? F-? That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, it was really. How do you interesting. have the motivation to keep me? Ma- like, I would have quit oh. by now. Oh, I don't. <laughs> she freaks out. She has some freakouts on social media. She's like, I've been deleted, and she'll go off on tweets. And the next day, she's like, I'm good. I'm good. I made another one. Yeah. I just have a, have a, I have to have a breakdown, and that's my process. I'm going to rant. I'm going to cry. I'm going to threaten to throw everything away. I'm going to, like, even when my car situation happened, I, t- I called my ex-husband. I was like, it's time to throw the car away. It's time to throw it away. Yeah. And he was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. So I feel like that's how me and social media are. I'm like, I'm throwing it away. I'm quitting. I'm, I, I'm just, I'm done. And then, like, a whole 24 hours have gone by, and I've thought about it, and I've obsessed about it. I'm like, all right, yeah. I got a game plan. I'm yeah. coming back. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh my it's God. more the motivation of two of like, I'll have the spurts of, I'm going to walk away. I'm going to walk away. I'm done. I'm mentally tired. And then, like, I'll sit with my blessings and then I'll look at the past and I'll be like, do I want to be here again? Nah, we're good. We're blessed. We're happy. Yep. We're grateful. Yeah. So. Wow. And then each time you're probably going to get better and better and build it more and more. Yep. Yep, it's gotten me to the point where like I lost my Twitter recently on my birthday wow. and I literally looked at my phone as I landed to Bali and was like, time to grow another one. I didn't nope. even flinch because I was deleted from Instagram so many yeah. times. Oh so I was God. just like, whatever. It Jesus. is what it is. Wow. Where do you come up with the ideas and stuff for your content? That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, I don't know because it's kind of just one of those things where I'm just like, I, I go based off of lighting honestly so like if I wake up the day and I'm like okay I'm inspired to create content what's my lighting agenda for the day Mm -hmm. am I gonna want to play with the sun if there's no sun am I waiting till nighttime what colors at nighttime am I gonna play with and it's more so like until I'm in action I honestly don't know what I'm gonna create I have a like intentions I want to create this but I mean I might have this want and it might not be created for six months because as I'm like setting up for that want another idea might become more important to me so then I'll just go on that or I'll start filming and start going on that agenda and then it creates a whole new idea and I'm like all right back burner next time you approach I'm gonna do that one but for now this is what I created so I just kind of allow it to do its thing um what do you have to say to the people that say OnlyFans is not a real job Oh, 100% is. They don't, they don't understand. Like, there's so much math into it. There's literally so much marketing. People go to school to learn how we market. Yeah. To learn how to social. There's literal social media people who went to school to learn how to be a social media marketer. And here we are learning the techniques by free, by doing it being in an action so OnlyFans is a real career you don't have to be doing porn to you know whatever some people are bakers some people are athletic people it's a real job because you're (laughs) promoting who you are which is like the same as I bring up AT&T all the time because it's where I used to work but it's a prime example of do you consider AT&T a real job? They're, they're just standing there selling phones all day, mm-hmm. marketing, right. pushing right. it on TV, pushing it all over the internet, coming up with new devices, new phone plans, all these things. We're doing the same thing. Our phone plans are our subscription price. Right. Yeah, it's true. And too, at the end of the day, it's your brand. It's your business, you know, so. Yeah, you, there's a literal product and we are the product right. of de- versus a device. Yeah. yeah. I was just fighting with somebody on Facebook. He was like, I get in these Facebook wars, but he was like, he made a po- post. He was like, you girls think OnlyFans is a real job. Go get a real job. You're nothing but a prostitute. So I hate when people say that shit. Uh, it's so irritating because I'm just like, all these techniques that I have in OnlyFans, I also learned working for an at t a company learning how to market learning how to sell learning how to price learning how to talk to people you know i'm a huge introvert and i hate talking to people but now because i worked other sales jobs i know how to mingle with that and these skills i can quit OnlyFans and go back into sales and probably be 10 times way better than what i was 10 years ago and it's because of all these networking skills we know our you know how to cut straight to the chase some people don't know how to do that they'll sit here and have a conversation and mingle and still never get a sale done yeah you know so it's just like all these techniques and skills that we have developed inside of OnlyFans we can literally all of us lose OnlyFans every porn site go get a regular job and probably succeed way better than a regular CEO yeah 
Yeah, it's true. Do you have any other side hustles or anything? Um, other than my spiritual brand, I'm building a juice brand. Ooh. Um, yeah, that's my pride and joy. I'm no chef. I'm no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know any of anything. I'm honestly, it goes back into the creativity. I love color and I love experimenting with how things come together. It's almost like makeup to me. I don't know how to paint or like create shapes, but I know how to blend and I know how to create a type of something you know what i mean it's like abstract painting so it's the same thing with food you're abstract gra grabbing all these colors all these flavors pulling it together and you're creating something very healthy without added sugars without preservatives and these are the detoxes that our body needs and throughout my spiritual journey i have learned that if you're not feeding your body correctly with water with things that can help you know reset you ground you back to the earth and you're just filling yourself up with all these toxins you're actually clouding your vision your third eye is no longer open because it's trying its hardest to fight the oils through over processed things versus if you ground yourself with earth products it's like feeding your soul in a different way so i want to be able to like educate people on how to feed their soul i like that yeah so what are you going to exactly do with the juice business? Are you going to sell it or are you going to educate people or both? So like right now I'm wanting to focus on an ebook and then I want to like create a bunch of recipes, holiday, just fun stuff that people never even think of. Like recently I did pumpkin two ways and people were like, I didn't even know you can drink pumpkin. And I was like, me neither. I just thought it was a pretty fruit. And I was like, why not? Let's try it. And it came out really good. Sweet potato too. You didn't think about this. So these are things that people don't even know that you can juice or drink. And a lot of people are lazy. You know, some people are like, oh, I don't want to like chew too much. My jaw gets tired. Okay, well here, you know, take an hour out of your day for a week worth of juices and you don't have yeah. to chew nothing. Yeah. Like you're still feeding your soul. Wow. Do you do juice cleanses and stuff yourself? Yeah, yeah yeah so i i personally love them um and i work out a lot so i notice the difference of when i wake up and how my body is feeling how like it's healing from the workouts if i'm overly sore it's probably because i need a certain type of vitamin and also being plant-based vegan diet you don't receive a lot of the vitamins in your food so it's hel it's helpful to just keep adding on top of it yeah you know what i mean so wow that's yeah. awesome do you are you excited for this venture of maybe giving up OnlyFans and doing this full time? Or do you think you're going to be doing OnlyFans for a while? I think I'm going to be doing OnlyFans for a while because it's kind of like my investor right now. And I have a lot of fans who are heavily invested in my spiritual journey and my juicing journey. Like I had fans buy my juicer. And I honestly, if it wasn't for my fans, I was trying to go the cheap way and I was buying like a hundred dollar juicers and just doing this all extra process that was making my juice processing from like what is now an hour to like six to eight hours and then I was just so like I vlogged this process and my fans were like let's just one of my fans was like I'll just go ahead and buy this juicer for you Aww. like let's just make this process easier and then from there it was like I started blooming and other ideas and I was like thank you so much so I think I'm gonna keep only fans because I have a lot of also fans that I feel like I'm <clears throat> helping on different levels other than just sexual like I'm literally the therapist so yeah I feel like your brand, you're very like true to yourself. And a lot of people are like faking it for clout or faking it for the money. But I feel like you're really true to yourself. Yeah, I can't fake it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, um, I mean, like I suffer from manic, manic depression and extreme anxieties. And if I fake that I'm having a hard day, like I have waves at least three times a week. Sometimes you won't even know. You will think I had a great, fantastic month because I was able to go through those waves easier. Sometimes I'm breaking extremely hard. And if I don't vocalize that, then how else are my fans going to relate to me and understand that, okay, mommy needs a break today because she's literally having a manic episode. And every time I express that, my fans are like, they come forward. They're like, I suffer from this. I understand. What do you need? I've had moments where I tried to fake it and I would jump on OnlyFans and just start breaking, crying. And the fans would be like, I'm on Snapchat. If you want a video, call me. I'm here. So I would go from feeling like I, I have no one in my corner to just Snapchatting a fan and literally at three o'clock in the morning crying a fan that maybe just described that day or had been there for three months and said nothing, you know? So I don't know. I just feel like I can't fake that. Yeah. yeah. What do you think of in the different aspect of girls like faking like I know you're bisexual <laughs> so I know a lot of these girls like fake like these girl and girl scenes. I hate it. <laughs> oh my god i hate it when i first got into OnlyFans, oh that was one of the things that me and my ex were like talking about i was like can i please fuck girls like oh because like <laughs> i was just so excited to just explore my sexuality you know i didn't like my first sexual experiences were with women i lost my virginity to a female i wow. dated nothing but females even my oldest son's father that was our lingo like we were long distance because I was in foster care and he was like my support system as a young girl. And he was like, if you need to be with someone, I'm open to you being with women, you know? So I've always,
always been on that top side. But when I got married, it had to like close off. You know, we didn't, <laughs> we couldn't really like play in that arena. And plus he was also very intimidated. Like, oh, I have to worry about you. And not just with men, but women too. Yeah. Like <laughs> it was very awkward to think about. But um, when I started OnlyFans, I was like, oh, I'm gonna be with all these yeah. women. Like I was so excited. And the first couple of experiences of women I was with, they were not bisexual. I've had my pussy accidentally bitten. <laughs> oh, no. yeah and it was just like I've been in such awkward positions where I'm like bro if you want to experiment go to someone else who's curious because I'm not curious I know what I want I know what I'm doing like I'm not gonna bite you so don't bite me <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually want to cater to you and then I had experiences where women were like they wouldn't tell me until we're about to be in the act and they're just like oh you don't have to like eat me because I won't be turned on just kiss my leg or whatever and I'm like that's like telling a dude like yeah let's have sex let's have sex just kiss right, <laughs> right? Yeah. you're putting something in my face that I actually want to devour and yeah. I'm like that's it's a very teasing so I honestly can't do it like I will shut down and say no I've yeah. done it to men and I've done it to women like I will not continue I'm sorry good for you yeah. sticking to your boundaries too because it doesn't feel good and there's there's like this feeling that you feel afterwards you just feel drained you feel used you don't feel value you don't feel worthy um you don't feel like someone actually was attracted to you. It's like, it's a whole thing. So I'm like, I'm not even gonna put that energy out there. If you you want fake porn, go someone else. And I, I make it very point whenever women reach out to me, I'm like, are you lesbian? Are you bisexual? Are you just OnlyFans gay? Yeah. <laughs> like, well, do you kind of have like almost like an interview process now because of this? Um, not even an interview process. Um, I kind of just can go like based off the, I can tell you know and if i need to verify it i'll ask you know i can just uh, feel that energy and then also um i'll kind of also say how i film of like i am very into the connection i'm very into um setting up being precise about the setup but not touching much during okay. like i want this to feel like we weren't actually filming and a lot of my fans they like damn it feels like y'all almost forgot the cameras were there that's how i was able to catch my 10 minute cuddle with my my girlfriend because we forgot the cameras were rolling and we just started cuddling for 10 minutes you know what i mean so i like to capture all those genuine moments if we need to get pov cool let's have a mm -hmm. phone nearby but we're not focused on actually touching that because i know what that feels like with me and my ex-husband we were not connected and we were so focused on the cameras, the angles and all these things. And it caused a lot of disruption of energy in the exchange and it leaves you just feeling stripped and raw. Right. So if you can just eliminate that, you don't even have to talk afterwards and you don't have to, you know, know their life story beforehand. But let's create this moment as comfortably as possible. And so I really like emphasize my comfort and it comes out like a lot of women, even men, they're just like, wow, like I appreciate this. I actually want to do this this way. And that's why I also make everyone come to me because you're in my zone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't have to worry about being in your zone. You can come to me and it's my rules. Yeah, so. I feel like your zones, like you set up, like I see your whole setup. It's so like, <laughs> I would feel so relaxed. I feel like maybe I would do a girl girl scene in your in your place because it's so like set up so nice. Like yeah. I swear, I, your content is a one. Thank you. I really, I really strive for that. I just want everyone to feel comfortable and like I think about it beforehand. I have fruits ready. I have water ready. Oh I'm like God. beforehand. I'm like, what do you need? Like from the moment they're walking through my door, I'm trying to compliment guys too. I'm trying to compliment them. I want them to feel like this isn't a pro porn set because I also do work with a lot of pro guys. I'm not pro, but I work with them. And they always tell me like, whoa, this is a complete like I've had guys be like, I don't even have to take poppers with you. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, good, because this is supposed to be real. I've had guys be like, they'll start to warm themselves up. And I'm like, bro, I'm here. That's oh my, my job. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, oh, you actually want to do that? I'm like, yes, I want to be connected with you for right. this moment. I don't want to feel like it was just set up and go like yeah. that's awkward. I can't do that. So is sex always an emotional thing for you or can yes. you do like no strings attached? Um, I mean, I. I guess it's all no strings like attach. Um, but no, I can't do one night stand. Mm -hmm. Like I just can't. Like Would you consider a one night stand though, like somebody that you made content with? Is that considered a one night stand? Um I don't think so because I still have con contact with them. Okay. Majority of the time. And I do aim to keep a contact with people that I film with. Like may not be like we're best friends or buddy buddy, but like we just exchange this energy and we're connected for life. When you have sex with someone, you're connected for yeah. life yeah. and that shit's going to affect you. So if you yeah. 
exchange with someone who didn't have good intentions on you or didn't care about you, your energy is going to be affected. So I make an attempt to at least be connected even afterwards. Like, hey, how you doing? Like, we may not talk for a year, but I'm gonna, like, if a holiday came up, I'm still thinking of you. I loved your energy. I'm gonna always remind you of how grateful I am for you exchanging with me. You know, I value, I respect you no matter who you are. Wow. Do you have, um like, what is your fan base mace? based off of like what fetishes and king because i see on twitter you're called mommy all the time what is this mommy fetish <laughs> so like when i first started only fans i was confused with my identity i thought i had to be cosplay i thought i had to be all these <laughs> weird ass shit right and then over time um i want to say when we moved to vegas a year and a half ago me and my ex-husband it started becoming hot wife content because then I started highlighting my marriage and I hid my marriage and my kids for a very long time. Because when I was a model, people, you know, trash women who are have kids. Oh, what are you doing? Your kids are at home. What are they going to feel like? You know, blah, blah, blah. And my kids are actually very proud of me. You know, they don't know extent to what I do, but they walk around and be like my mommy's like, you know, well accomplished. Like they they're very proud of me. Um, but I, I just protect my family at all costs. But then it came to a point where I was like, we need to start highlighting this marriage. Like, what the fuck? So then we became hot wife content. And then right after that, when when we were splitting up I was like well what am I gonna be like I just highlighted us as yeah. you know a marriage and now I gotta split us up and then I had an ex-personal assistant she was just like over time I don't know how it happened but we went from mistress to mommy and then I was like mistress for me is like women who want to degrade men like I don't mind degrading you but it's almost gonna be in like a very nice way like you pathetic little thing it's okay. <laughs> versus you pathetic right. you know what I mean like I feel like I'm more on the mommy way like mommies can talk a certain way and you will receive that whether it was mean or not whether it was direct or not you're listening to mommy because mommy rules daddy if you think Ooh, about it yeah you know so mommies rule all when you have a bad day who you want to talk to you don't want to talk to mistress who's going to put you down you want to talk to mommy who's going to make you feel good and might put you down <laughs> put you in the corner <laughs> put you in a corner you were a bad thing today go sit in the corner you know your reward yeah. might be if you can crawl out and you know, do <laughs> x y and z so it's definitely on the mommy dom because i am a mom and i I'm a mom of two boys and I feel like I really really know how to like talk to men in a different way like a nurturing kind of way a nurturing kind of way and I'm not like I'm a words of affirmation person so how I speak to others is gonna affect me too so if I'm putting you down in a degrading way and it's just very just fucked up I'm gonna be thinking about that like I can't believe I just made so like they might enjoy it but like I don't know there's a, just a different way I've even coached men that would like start trying to sex with me over video chat on sex panther or whatever and they'll like try to like dom me or whatever I'm like you know I don't mind being submissive but at least make me feel sexy mm -hmm. about it yeah right. you know like I want to fuck the shit out of you because you're so beautiful blah blah blah, blah. Like, tell me all the ways you want to slut me out but also right. tell me all the ways I'm beautiful yeah. like <laughs> don't just like make me feel like some fuck doll to you you know what I mean so I've actually coached men on how to sex with women wow. and it's you like charge yeah because <laughs> they're actively trying to sex with me yeah. in the process but then they're also trying to learn how to be with their wives so i've had men come to me like how do i talk better to my wife yeah. like i want to be able to slut her out but not make her feel x y and z and i also want to feel dominant and empowered just because you're dom doesn't mean you need to be an asshole yeah it's a thing so a lot of my fetishes are like the mommy dom feet um body worship because you know <laughs> body worship and um thin dom yeah wow. that was my main thing they, they just love my entire body <laughs> i really see the mommy stuff i i have a few uh like subs that only subscribe to me and i had to learn the mommy thing because they're like oh like do you do mommy play and at first i was like yeah because i'm just a hustler i'm gonna learn <laughs> yeah that's what i do but it was wild like it's some crazy shit. I love those fans. They're actually like the funnest. They are the funnest uh -huh. and they will pay a lot. You know, the, uh, mommy dom is a, a dom. It's a type of uh, skill that you do need to have. You know, it's a, a relationship, a one-on-one, -on -one, more personable one. But it's the same as like being a, dom, a mistress too. So um, it's, a, it's a language. It's definitely a language. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're, um, I was looking on your Twitter the other day. Your Twitter is very X-rated. Do you ever get afraid that that's going to like, hurt your OnlyFans income by putting that on your Twitter? Actually, no, because if you pay attention to it, I don't show pussy. Mm -hmm. I've never shown pussy. Yeah. Like, you, maybe, like, on my model page, you know, I have two different Twitters. So okay. I have a model Twitter, and then I have my XXX spam Twitter. Um, and even on there, like, 
from the very, very beginning, my ex-husband was like, I am not comfortable with you showing that. And then I was like, me neither. Like <laughs> we're on the same page here. And at first it did affect my income because people wouldn't subscribe to me. But the more I stayed on that, like I honestly do value, like if you're not coming to pay me and see this, you can see everywhere else because all of that was already, like if you Google my legal name, I'm on magazines, all that shit. So I pop up tits all the time, but what you'd never see is this. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna blur that out all day long. You might see my bush, you might see the landing, whatever, cool, the impossible shape of it, but you're not gonna see detail. I don't personally feel comfortable with that. So I blur out videos, I blur out photos, um, and I even try to make an attempt to not focus on this right. you know so if i'm posing i'm gonna tilt my butt just a little bit so where i don't have to blur anything so sure they might get off but they're they're coming because to my only fans right. because they can't see the one thing that everyone else is showing <laughs> it's like a tease or a literally sneak peek. It's, it's a sneak peek yeah. and i i focus more on the sensuality and um the play you know versus like here subscribe here's feet subscribe here's my vagina subscribe here's this but subscribe you know like let me just tease you all day like you know I like that <laughs> what do you think of these girls who do like spread eagle every fucking post sex videos like for free it's like just for free on twitter <laughs> it blows my mind because it's actually frustrating i got really curious one day and i was like just sitting by myself and i was like are these girls even actually like posting anything different on their only fans like if they're taking posting three to ten times a day on their Twitter, what are they posting on their Twitter or their OnlyFans? And I would take my time and go subscribe to I did this in one night. I subscribed to over 15 girls and every single girl that I subscribed to were posting the same thing that they were posting on Twitter. And I was like, how and why? Because then even if they're seeing it on Twitter, opening on OnlyFans, they're going to get pissed. They're like, going to get I pissed. This, yeah. And they're never going to reopen something. That part. Or it's just up and down their feed. It's the same thing that they post on Twitter. And I'm like, how and why? Or repeats of the same photos. And I'm like, it just, it's really frustrating. And I don't know how these girls are making money, but kudos to them. It doesn't work for me. <laughs> That's what I think. I feel like a lot of these girls, they're not really there for the long run for their fans. They're just there for like the quick fan to come in, buy some stuff, realize it's the same shit, and then they're out. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's also why that they do this. That's what I don't think a lot of people realize. Mm -hmm. There's certain creators who are there that are going to spend time with like mommy stuff and and building a relationship but some of these girls they don't really care about that they're just there for the quick dollar yeah and also i'd be literally sitting there and i would have to unsubscribe to them after a few days because they're like spamming bundles all these things and i'm like jesus christ a bundle for a, a hundred tapes for five bucks and i'm like what <laughs> <laughs> yeah no wonder why you're out of it sounds like they're out of content to post and no wonder why you're selling it for so cheap and then selling a hundred like a hundred um i'm so like cheap. it's just insane to me and i'm like it devalues you know this whole market is flooded with women just like that so if you can stand out like i honestly don't even i used to send like 60 dms a day and then it got down to four then it got down to three then it got down to one and now i'm at three a week <laughs> <laughs> and honestly my fans appreciate it every time they talk about it they're like dude i appreciate that you don't spam your dms you send audios all day you send videos all day you're actually trying to have a conversation with me and not trying to sell me and i feel like if these women actually took a step moment back about two years ago i implemented two and a half years ago i implemented making a video menu on my only fans and it took a year and a half to complete making captions, making um, previews and all these things. And because I took that time to do that, that is why I don't have to push so much in DMs because they can just scroll my video menu, which I'm constantly reminding them. I have videos in my video menu, I have videos in my video menu, go over there and they're all labeled like BG cream pies, BG face, so solo this, solo that. So it's very easy for them. And I make a lot of money that way versus constantly spamming the DMs. I leave the DMs to, for myself. I leave my DMs to get to know them personally. Mm -hmm. Like there's no reason why I need to be spamming them with with bundles you know i did that the first year and a half <laughs> you know i didn't give a fuck about my fans and then it showed like i was always stressing about why weren't they tipping or loving me or you know all these things it's because i wasn't i was selling them like at&t selling massive <laughs> you're know? not building the connection the relationship with that them. part and that matters you know um I've had so many fans that may have would have left me, but the moment I would show personality, they're like, this is what I came for. And then they start splurging. So it's just a reminder, like you don't need to be doing all that extra shit. You recently, this, this lifestyle, people think that it's so fun and glamorous. And we make all this money and, and whatnot, but you just recently, people don't realize the other part. So you recently bank of America closed out your bank account because they didn't, 
they like looked into your name, I guess. Like yeah. what happened? So when I first made my first ever corporation, it was Ruby XO. That was the first name I was going under. And it was very, a lot of uh, red flags that I had. I couldn't get homes. I couldn't get loans. I couldn't, every time we would go to the bank, they would give us issues. So I was like, okay, I already knew it was going to be an issue. Then I made a new corporation whenever I got divorced and all that stuff, Erotic Medusa. And um, my accountant was like, okay, you need to get a regular, like a bank account for your business because this is getting annoying having to go through your personal <laughs> statements all the time. And I was like, well, everything I do is business anyway. And he was like, still, we need to track this under a checking, like all your promos, all this stuff. So it took actually six months later after opening my, my L or corporation before I was like, okay, let me just, yeah. And I went to the bank for a notary for my husband to have uh, more custody over my kids. And while I was there, I was like, let me just ask them some questions. So it led from me asking questions, to them opening up a business account. They went through the whole process, asked me questions. I never said what I was. My corporation is Erotic and Medusa Media. And they were like, what kind of media do you make? And I was like, oh, I'm a social content creator. And they were like, what do you do? And I was like, I make juices. I make, I do tarot readings. Like I excluded everything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was like, and he was like, do you get paid on subscriptions? I was like, no, I do not. Like if you, you know, I, I don't, I just literally educate and like, I don't do anything. And so they approved the account. They even in the same day were like, let's run the, your business credit and get you approved for a credit line. So I was like, oh, awesome. I can do two bangs in one, in one go. I can start my credit line, all this thing. I was excited. Got approved for a 40,000 credit line without even trying. And I was like, holy fuck. So two months goes by. Um, I was using the credit card as a replacement to my Apple card because of my Apple card I have like 15,000 limit or whatever. So I was like, I'm gonna just switch this over and start building my credit. And then, um, no abnormal purchases, no nothing. And on my flight to Florida, I got an email saying that your account is below a hundred dollars. And I was like, excuse me, yeah. because like, that's damn near impossible. <laughs> like, yeah. What the fuck? And, um, I was like, 30,000 times over than what they should have, you know? So I log into my account and upon logging in, I couldn't see no balances. So it was just my name there. And I was like, what the fuck is happening? So I'm thinking because I'm on flight, that's the reason why. So I'm like chatting with live support. I'm like, I can't see my balances. I just got this random email. What's going on? And they were like, well, you need to call us now. And I was like, I can't. I'm on flight. Like, And they were like, well, when you land, you need to call this number. So I called the number. It was like 11 o'clock at night, too. So I was like, fuck, how am I supposed to check into my hotel? How am I supposed to get my rental? How am I supposed to do anything? I had Miso who needed to go to the bathroom. He needed to eat. Like I was freaking out sitting at the airport. So I called this number and they were like, uh, the department that you need to talk to is closed. And I was like, of oh course. my God. So I'm sitting at the airport, um, freaking out and this airport security guard sees me. And so, um, he was like, if you can, uh, if you need help, I can get you litter, different things like that. So he ended up putting me in this like nursing room and I was able to like, he got me litter to, to um, deliver to the airport. Cause I was wow. more so worried about this yeah. one. I was like, he needs to go to the bathroom. He needs to eat. Like I need to cater to my baby so the security guard helped me I didn't leave the airport till like 1 a.m because I was just like so like just just in my head about it so I stayed up all that night and then that morning like eight o'clock in the dot I called Bank of America I was like where's my money and they were like they after like two hours of switching me into a bunch of departments they finally got me to the department that could help me and they were like well it actually looks like your account's closed and I was like why what do you mean? And they were like, all it says for the business decision, we should have mailed you something. And I was like, mailed me something. I, I don't, I honestly don't even check my mail like that unless it's packages and it's in two different rooms. So like, what do you mean? Like I haven't, they're like, well, we should have mailed you something about a week ago for you to go and get your funds. But we closed your account for business decisions. And I was like, they were like in the letter that they would have sent me would have said why. And I was like, well, I'm in Florida right now and I need access to my money. Like this is not okay. Like I'm completely stranded in a whole nother city right now. This is not okay. And I was panicking about it. And they were like, well, we mailed you a check. And I was like, what? They were like, for all of your funds, uh, of whatever you had in there, we mailed you a check. And if anything was coming in as a deposit, it would have been bounced back to where it came from. Because I had also just deposited, like, I deposit OnlyFans income every single day. So I was like, what about the money I deposited? Yeah. Like, what is going on? So they were like, I was like, can I at least go to the bank? Can I at least, like, pull out, like, my money? Like, I am in a whole nother state where this needs to be extenuation circumstances or something. Like, I'm stranded right now. Really wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I had my backup, you know, accounts like Cash App and different things like that. But it still was like my main 99% of the money was gone. 
So they were like, in about 10 business days, I'll receive my funds and there's nothing I can do. So I sat in that situation for a week and then I was able to get back home. And then um, 10 days later, I get my, my check. But they wrote it to Erotic Medusa Corporation. So I couldn't even cash it without opening another business account. Oh my God. Yeah. And I was like, I even went to Bank of America and I was like, can I cash this in my personal? Because I had a personal. I just didn't, they closed my business. And they were like, sorry, you can't cash this. And I'm like, but I'm literal the business owner. Like, what, what right. do you mean? This is my money. Y'all shouldn't have closed my account to begin with. They closed my credit card line and my checking account for a business decision. And I did eventually get that letter in the mail and it didn't say nothing. It just said business decision. Wow. Wow. They should have made that decision when they wanted to work with you yeah and I went to the bank teller that opened it up and I was like questioning him and I'm I am one of those people that if you irritate me I'm gonna scream so I screamed inside Bank of America and I was <laughs> yeah. that lady fuck all y'all <laughs> I was so mad about it and I was like I'm gonna sue you guys and then they were like well good luck because you signed an NDA that said that we can close your account at any time wow and I was like yeah you always got to read the fine print. <laughs> yeah. I, was, oh I was not going to sit there. Yeah. Oh, hell no, never. <laughs> <laughs> read this fine print. But like, it was obvious because when I went to Chase to open my business account, they asked me for my business email on Bank of America. I used info at iamadusa.com. You, for you to have a business email, you have to link it to a website. I didn't know that. Well, mm -hmm. I knew that, but I didn't know that like, that's how they link everything. And so when he asked me that, he was like, do you have a business email? And I was like, yes. And he was like, do you have a business website? And I was like, that's how they caught me. Mm. It's simple. So I told them instead, because I do have another website under my legal name. That's literally just a blank page because I stripped it. And I was like, actually, I do have another business email. <laughs> just in case, in case they decide to look me up, yeah. it's going to be a blank page, not wow. linking to nothing. So. It's pretty crazy. I've heard a few stories, like even girls just not getting accepted right away. At least they, they didn't go through what you had to do. But they it's so weird that banks, like, bitch, we, this is real money. It's not fake money. It's not bad money. It's like we're almost like in the same category as drug dealers. Mm -hmm. like, Honestly, and that's the whole reason why they almost try to shut down OnlyFans or the porn, you know, related people to it because supposedly banks didn't want to deal with that, you know, and being uh, tied to porn or yeah. base or whatever and i think it's dumb yeah do you guys think that one day it'll get better or do you fear that like opening businesses and stuff one day it'll like hold us back i definitely think it it would hold still i think it's still going to be affecting mm -hmm. because i mean it's 2022 almost damn near 2023 and only fans has been popping what three four years five mm -hmm. years now like seriously popping and porn has been in the industry since 1960s 1950s before then we still where we are right. almost 100 years later so. <laughs> that's very true yeah. that's why i feel like it too helps with like connections and who you know too because you never know who's going to invest in you or something like that so sometimes you just got to go that route yep, you yeah you just got to be open to for the responsibility and also the rejections mm -hmm. it's hard <laughs> well those are the last of my questions are we going to get into this tarot card reading? yeah let's do it <laughs> I'm so excited for this. I'm so excited. So I'm just going to start it off by like okay. saging. And okay. Yeah. I've never saged. I've always wanted to. I bought it, but I never Well, did. then we've got some energy to, to clean yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Is it okay if I move away? From yeah. Okay. I'm just walking around and clean everyone because everyone's in she, here. She's just cleansing the room, guys. If you're watching this, you'll be able to see, but... And anyone who's watching also will receive this cleansing. So if anyone also wants to receive this cleansing that is watching, you may just take a few breaths in, set your intentions. You might even be able to smell the sage through the mic. I just invite you all to take a deep breath. I love the smell of sage. It smells so beautiful.
actually going to leave this off so that way I don't get disrupted by frequencies. What is your intentions for today? Um, I guess like clarity. Clarity? Yeah. Okay. Immediately, there was a card that flipped out before I could even shuffle. And even looking at the rest, um, this is Nine of Cups. Mm. It talks about someone who, usually when it's upright, it's because he's sitting on a throne and he's happy. He's very smug with where he is. Um, with it being reversed, it's telling me you're not very happy with where okay. you are. And... <laughs> um, emotions so a lot of emotions are being stirred um, things are flipping or upside down a lot for you and it's <laughs> causing you to not be able to even understand what you're feeling so then I pulled I pulled two earth sign and I already know you're a Capricorn energy then I also pulled heartbreak so um, in this two four six eight nine what two Eight. Eight of Pentacles. Sorry, I'm terrible at sometimes. <laughs> this talks about he's working towards something. Mm -hmm. So he's built, stacking up all his coins. He's trying to make his way, but he's missing a piece. So it's almost like no matter where he's trying to build his wealth, his materials, and all these things, there's something that's missing mm -hmm. and is still causing you to be unhappy. Then I have a heartbreak card here, Three of Swords, and it talks about there was a lot of sorrow. There's a lot of pain. Um... And maybe that's reflecting in on what's happening, on why you're so unhappy, because you haven't fully let that go and sit in that moment. Oh, God. What? what? <laughs> you're freaking me out. I don't want to say this, but okay. I kind of have to. Are you struggling with suicide? Um, No. Are you have thoughts about maybe like your life isn't worth it? Um, no, I don't think so. But with some stuff in like my past, like family and stuff like that, um, it's something that's like in the back of my mind a lot. Not necessarily about myself, but I used to fear like stuff would be like passed down or like like depression and stuff like that. But no, I don't. I personally don't. This card, it sits in the back of your mind yeah. to where it's almost like you're self-manifesting something you don't want okay i didn't pull it reverse as if something was happening like in this current moment mm -hmm. but it is something that you do topple with and that when you do go through hard moments it may be something that brings up and you're just mm -hmm. like it's definitely like after opening business and stuff like that i've definitely battled a lot more like depression anxiety and stuff so it's definitely like i've had like little moments and stuff that i'm like oh my god like what's like the point or something but I'm always like you're always fighting yeah, through that's why I didn't yeah. flip it reverse so you're fighting through you just have those moments of like nothing mm -hmm. right like now. all this work for like yeah. what? Yeah. giving up not feeling like you deserve it not mm -hmm. feeling like you're reaping those rewards and that's leaving you unhappy and that there's you need to take a step back because mm -hmm. I also pulled page of pentacles when I pull a family cards I think of mom dad teenager baby right so we have the mom who rules dad dad who protects the family and then you have this teenager who's learning how to be mom and dad and then you have this baby who's more so or fighting for mom and dad then you have the baby who's learning everything so you're this baby page right here page uh, of pentacles you need to learn your talents more mm -hmm. you need to nurture them because there's a piece that you've left sitting out and that is going to be the piece that fits into the puzzle 
And until you take a step back and assess that and also forgive this heartbreak, um, give more self-love. Also, also, I'm hearing forgive your emotions mm -hmm. yeah. here and allow you to also go through them. Because as much as you're trying to be like, I'm fine, mm -hmm. I'm fine, I'm yeah. fine. <laughs> you not acknowledging that you're not fine is causing you to miss that one piece. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to be able to complete this tree until you go through that process. And there might be a talent that you have to learn more. Mm -hmm. It's something that maybe you know that you want to dive into, but you don't see worth it right now. Right. Because it might topple a lot of these emotions. Mm -hmm. So don't be afraid. Tree of Life is also like a reminder that there's so many opportunities. Because yeah. when you look at a, a tree and it has endless branches, you're literally this tree right, right. here. And you have endless branches. And you have to be uh, open to what you are. Right. All your pers possibilities. And also forgive this one. Yeah. It's funny. All of this stuff that you're saying is definitely spot on. Sammy and her friend Patty actually inspired me to go to, like, therapy. And all of this is stuff that I'm working on. I'm trying to, like, forgive, like, my past self and stuff like that. And, like, my, like, inner child and stuff like that. I'm, like, just starting to connect with and everything. So, yeah. Yeah. So I just mm -hmm. sit with yourself. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's the main message yeah. of all of this is just forgive. You have endless opportunities. Don't be afraid of life. And you're worthy of everything mm -hmm. that comes your way. And if you work hard enough and you apply all the pieces, this tree that you're grooming into a perfect blooming mm -hmm. one will be. Yeah. So just give it time. Okay. Yay. Oh, my <laughs> God. I love that. <laughs> yes. Well. So keep working hard yeah. <laughs> right. and do the content creation that you want yes. to do. That's yes. what I got out of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, <clears throat> Sorry. But so that was, so wow. Medusa, she does this full time. Mm -hmm. um, you can get your cards read via Facebook time, uh, like Facebook. Whatever they have. That's whatever they have. A chat available, yeah. Um, most people have FaceTime or Skype or Google Duo, but I, I try to make it as personable. I don't really, like, offer it, like, on text basis because I can just really feel your energy and, like, I have stage burgeoning. I have people mm -hmm. tell me all the time, I can feel it and smell it. So it just, like, really invites a whole space open. So yeah. They can smell it through, like, the video chat kind of? Some people are very open to wow. it. Yeah. Like it, it's it's all energy. So if you like project it enough and me being centered energy, like um, I'm triple Leo fire. So my job is to absorb and constantly radiate. If you think about the sun, it's absorbing and radiating. So if I can as much personal contact as I can get with you, I'm going to absorb whatever negativity you have and then I'm going to radiate enough for this door to open. And then you might smell sage. You might... Oh feel that energy yeah oh my god do you ever do it on only fans <laughs> all the time yeah like i do uh tarot tuesdays and i literally sit naked and mm -hmm. it's not sexual like they'll be like oh my god this is so sexy because i'm a natural nudist you know i'm not gonna wear clothes just for you know something like this but they listen and they'll like i'll be like comment your energy or comment an emoji something to invite me to you you have to comment something and most of the time like i'll get like 50 to people 100 people of my fans coming in i'll even do votes i'm like do you want me to do um fun show or do you want me to do tarot show and they'll be like it'll be equal so i'm like gosh i gotta, <laughs> I gotta like, decide which one i want to do but they fully actively like they book me privately or they'll find my website and they'll be like i just watched you do a bunch of readings and i need one myself i have fans who book me weekly um text me and be like i need another one i need wow, another one that's awesome yeah well, thank you for this. This yeah. is so nice. Um, please, guys, please follow a spiritual Medusa. Yes. Um, if you want to book, she just hit her up. We did one last night. I'm telling you, it was insane. <laughs> it was a lot longer than this one. We wanted to cut this one down a little bit. Um, but do you have any other questions or anything? I don't think so. Do you want to say anything else? you have questions <laughs> for us or anything? Oh, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, so just plug your socials. Is your OnlyFans Spiritual Medusa as well? Erotic Medusa. Erotic Medusa. Um, we will pin her below. You guys can follow her. Please stay tuned for next episode. This was so fun. Thank yes, you for coming. Thank you, so thank much. you so much for having me. I had so much fun. I was nervous, but yeah. I know. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys, and we are signing off. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Guys, it's Mer. Ah, she's, she's a cat. cat. She's a cat.
Jesus.